Okay. Good evening, everybody. Right. Today, we'll start off with the blowing of the shofar. For those who have not heard it before it gets too dark. Oh, yes, this will be the last week we'll do this, obviously. The last uh, Shia before uh, Rosh Hashanah, we said we were going to. I wanted to discuss the Maxar. So, do people have a Maxar with them, their own, or there's some from the shul? Everybody have one, an old school Maxar or something? Because, as I say, it's a lot of davening. Uh, we have some more here. Oh, okay. So, if anybody wants an old school Maxar. So, I felt long and hard about people had some ideas about talking about Hashem, talking about various other aspects of Rosh Hashanah, but I thought that, you know, you want to give over something perhaps that people can uh, gain and take something from. And I thought if I could get one person to think of one extra thought or one extra idea of inspiration throughout the Rosh Hashanah davening, we'll do the same in Mitzvah Hashem before Yom Kippur, then that is something that's fantastic. So I thought I'd go through the Maxwell. As I've said two or three times, People should take the maxa themselves. I can't give you permission if you don't have one to take ones of these home. You have to ask the president if he'll let you borrow one for a few days. Look over, first of all, the translation of what a lot of the words mean. And familiarize yourself. First of all, find a maxa that speaks to you. Some people, you know, you're going to be spending a lot of time with your maxa, right? There's one over there. He's going to spend a lot of time. So find a maxa, first of all, obviously, that you can read. And that's easy to read. You know, do... As I said, my, I'm not really very forthright usually with my views, but I think that it's laziness on behalf of people who come to Shul Rosh Hashanah, wake up and expect a explained service and everything to be handed to them on a silver platter. You've got to go and work for it yourself. So I say that and I urge people, the first thing is find a maxa that you like, that is comfortable with, your, with the typesetting or the translation or whatever it is, and spend some time going over what the main ideas are. So... That's what we want to talk about tonight. I'm going to try very hard to resist the temptation to talk very fast, which I normally do. Try and cram everything in. We normally like to finish in 45 minutes. Uh, if people want to leave, they're more than welcome to do so. If anyone has any questions, but we'll try and get through some of the basics. By way of introduction, I wanted to start off with the Maharil. The Maharil was a 13th century German rabbi who wrote, he's colloquially known as the father of Nusach Ashkenaz. He is the one who wrote down the Minhagim, and he's a basically known as the father of, of, of Nusach Ashkenaz, and he has a lot of the Minhagim and so on. And he is quoted in the Ramah as saying as follows. Hold on. Right. So it's talking about Rosh Hashanah and the Nigunim and so on, Yom Kippur. You've got to say while it's still day. And you sing the Nigunim. Right. 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 A person shouldn't change from the Minag and the custom of the city. Even in the Nigunim. I mean, I'm not getting into my rant about uh, uh, doing Nusach and Shabbos, that's for another time and probably another audience, but that's, you know, you <laughs> shouldn't change. Why? So the Mishra finishes off the last line of the Maril, which he actually says, because because people get confused. So you see, there's an idea that what people are used to, you know, you know there's an idea, you come to shul, you're expecting one thing, all of a sudden it's totally different, you're like, what, who, where, what, you know, totally different. So therefore, a lot of these nigunim, of course, everyone sings them slightly differently, and there's new modern tunes for a lot of the piyotim. I'm not getting into that. But the idea is these things that we are singing, the piyotim, they are, some cases, hundreds and thousands of years old, and they are very special, they mean something. And uh, even though it takes time, and even though it takes, you know, singing, that's what is to be done. It goes on to say that, let's say it's out of Shabbos, second day Yom Tov, Rosh Hashanah could be out of Shabbos, if he's getting late, or 
You're not supposed to daven musaf after seven and a half hours. You're supposed to start before. Florida is not a problem because that's not till two o'clock. So we're fine. But some places where it's earlier, it says it's better to miss out whole piyotim, whole stuff, than it is to sing quickly the nigunim. Because the nigunim people recognize it. That's what, ah, yes, that's my nigun. Ah, I've waited all year for this and I'm going to sing with. So these things are important and special. And I say this to impress upon you the importance of, of, of the davening and connecting with the davening. It's not just, oh, yes, we'll come to shore, we'll say a few nights songs, this davening, these piyotim, they actually mean some of the tunes, the, okay. So that's how I wanted to start. So having said that, there are two things. There's tefillah, davening, right? Like we have every day, we say Pesuket de Zimra, we say the Shemona Esrei, that's davening, of which there are obviously extra tefillos that we say on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and then there is piyotim, which for want of a better, go, better word, they translate as liturgical poems. I'm not sure what liturgical means. What, singing? Is that what it means? Litur- uh, liturgy? I'm not quite sure. But uh, anyway, they're poems. Very special, deep poems. But they are piyotim. So tefillah one is not supposed to miss out. Right? You're supposed to say the davening and uh, so on. But piyotim, again, a lot of different customs. People say different things. You can miss certain things out. And so on and so forth. So that is one of the differences. Another difference is, I don't think I should really say this. But I'm going to anyway, for better or for worse. You're not supposed to speak in tefillah, in Chazar Sashat, but you can't technically speak. The Yisra, the prohibition of speaking uh, in Chazar Sashat does not apply to the biyotim, but it doesn't mean it's a free-for-all to talk. But anyway, I wanted you all to know the halacha, so uh, there it is. Although in Musaf, you're not supposed to talk anyway because you've heard the show for you don't want to make a break. But asking somebody what page is it, or excuse me, I want to get out, uh, those things are, are, are permitted, by the way. Um, and so on. It's sort of, as they call it, excessive endless chatter, uh, which is uh, something that is uh, forbidden. So that is something as well. The chazan is supposed to say every word of tefillah aloud, but the piyotim, he doesn't have to say every word aloud. I mean, can you imagine if I have to say every word of piyotim aloud? <laughs> Especially Yom Kippur will be exhausted by the time uh, he finishes. So piyotim don't have to be said word for word aloud. And there's many different customs. Some say them all together, some say responsibly. We know how it goes, different things. So let's get into it. Let's start. I'm going to start with the um, uh, Hagdam of the Yesoid V'shoide Shavoide. This is a sefer that my father uh, used to learn with us. It's got a lot of Kabbalah in it. It's a very special holy sefer. Uh, you might have heard of it. I don't know. Um, but he used to learn it with us. It uh, goes through the davening, the parts of the year, what to think, how to think. And a uh, very special holy sefer. So it says like this. I'm going to read out uh, the introduction to what Rosh Hashanah uh, and Yom Kippur davening is all about. Achai v'reyai, my brothers and friends, ro leida shekimat kol nusach atfila shel Rosh Hashanah v'yom Kippur, all the davening and extra things you say in Rosh Hashanah v'yom Kippur, hu rak sheyiskades shemoi hagodai v'chala umais v'chala oilam. The whole purpose of davening Rosh Hashanah v'yom Kippur is that Hashem's name should be made holy, should become known and special throughout the whole world. Ki zeh ika hatfilas ato bayomim that is the main point of what all this machsa and all this extra stuff that we are doing is to pray for Hashem's name that quite frankly now is smudged into the ground. Religious people are called, oh, you're a zealot, you're a mashugana, oh, what are you doing? Oh, you, you know, people say, eh, we don't believe in it, you know, godliness, oh, where's your God? What you? People, you know, the name of God is besmirched and, 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 and so shattered in this world. So we're davening that his name should be reawakened and reunited. A person should feel pain in his heart and to cry. Especially on the great day. The Tfilis that talk about how Hashem's name is so profaned. It's more important to cry and to concentrate on the Tfilis that talk about Hashem's name being desecrated and davening that his name should be spread out the whole world, and it is to daven on your tefillahs. And it goes on to say all the rest of the stuff, but that's basically the idea. That is what we are doing. We are davening, we talk about Malkeinu many times, Hashem is our king, and therefore that comes with a lot of responsibilities. And the idea of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is we ask Hashem to have his name known throughout the whole world. So now I want to go through the matzah. A very typical Jewish fashion, going bits and bobs. I normally like to have my shear in order in a whole uh, section, but now we'll do lots of little tidbits, as I like to call it. So I'm going to start off with Hashkivenu in Mariv. It's uh, on page 58. 
Hashkiveinu is a very, very special prayer. I'm just going to read out from the Mate Ephraim, a halacha sefer, right? So this is not Musa, this is a halacha sefer. Right? You've got to daven with Bechavona at Sumo, Bifrat, Bebechas Hashkiveinu. And especially in the Brach of Hashkiveinu, Shakuloi Bakoshois at Sumois, which are amazing, awesome uh, requests. Oimrim Bevchi over Techanonim. You've got to say it with crying and begging Hashem. Ki Yom Sha'as Rachamim Veisuratsoi. And this, when we're saying Ashkivenu, it's a time of great Rachmim and Ratzon and mercy for HaKadosh Baruch. And listen to this. This is the Halacha Sefer, right? Not Musa, not uh, Kabbalah. Halacha, Mati Fran, that we pass can all the Halachas for, right? If you concentrate and you cry during the Brach of Ashkivenu, is a Muftach, is a Haftach, you are assured that your fellows are going to be, well, are not going to come back empty-handed. That's another story what all these type of thing means. Because Hashem can answer everybody. You could just say no. That's an answer, right? Like I say to my kids, you know, <coughs> yes, no. I mean, I've answered you. Just no. Right? Like, uh, whatever. So, uh, what that means is another story. But at least something will happen in the Brach of Hashkivenu. And just to go a little bit further in Kabbalah, uh, uh, which goes to another form here, the idea is, you know, Rosh Hashanah, young Rosh Hashanah in the morning is the din. So we have all these angels that are coming, right? And they're trying to accuse you of this, that, the other. That's what happens. But Hashkivenu says, Vahaser Satan milafanenu. You're asking Hashem to remove the Satan and behind us. He's the one pushing us to be too much of a zealot. Oh, yes, push you up the levels, and then all of a sudden he'll let go. Eee, down you go. And so on and so forth. So that's the Yetzar that's behind you. And all these things, Vahaser Yagain, Vahanacha, all that stuff, right? All these wonderful things we're asking Hashem to remove from us. Hashkivenu. We need to concentrate, have it in mind, especially uh, that uh, Hashkivenu, when we're saying it on the night of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, is uh, a very special time and we really need to go through please look at the translation go through it and it's something I don't want to go through the translations because you can all do that yourself but that is something Hashki Venu uh, that we need to take on board then we get to Shemona Esra so I'm going to talk about the Shemona Esra in Marib it's the same Shemona Esra for Shachris uh, and Mincha we add in the extra things so oh I didn't bring the Gemara Brachas uh, never mind okay so we know we add in Hamelech HaKadosh right Instead of Akeda Kodesh, we add in Zachreinu, Micha Mocha, we add in the things in the first bracha, and in the last bracha, Vasef Echaim, Bracha Vasholem, Chosto Echaim Toivim. Not going into why we add them in, how we add them in. The Gemara in Brachas, the only one mentioned in the Gemara is Hamelech HaKodesh and Hamelech HaMishpat in the week. Hamelech HaKodesh is actually mentioned in the Gemara, right? Not later. In the Gemara it says you change Hamelech HaKodesh. So, the halacha is that we paskin that if you miss out everything, you don't repeat Shmona Esra except for. This Hamelech HaKadosh. However, there are opinions. Toysfus brings down. Toysfus on the side there in the Gemara and Brachas says you do repeat for everything. Zachreinu, Michamocha, the Bahag, one of the great poskim says you repeat for everything. But we Paschal, not like that. But it's better if you remember, you still in Shemona Esra, to say it before you say Ose Shalom. Because to, you know, it is special, it is important. And the reason why I'm telling you, a lot of people say you do have to repeat Shemona Esra, so you don't take it for granted. Ah, oh, it's only Zochreinu L'chaim. It's not only Zochreinu L'chaim. happens to be. It's Tofik Brachas L'chake. We're not sure, so we don't want to repeat the Shemona Ezra. But really, one must make sure that uh, uh, one says, I didn't bring it with me now, but I had a thing. You know, a lot of people say, HaMelech HaKadosh out loud. They shout out the Sanish Shemona Ezra. So I always thought that was craziness. No, it's not. I saw brought down in one of those forums that you should do that. You should actually say, because then you know you've said it. If you remind yourself, so when people, you hear people shouting out, HaMelech HaKadosh, you know that it's a halachic thing, and we can't have tainers on it, we can't get upset with it, because uh, it is actually a halachic thought. So uh, be that as it may. So we add in things. We also add in the third bracha, in At HaKadosh, again, this is very strange, we're not going into uh, the details all the time. We add in, now we're going to page 64. So this now applies to all the Shemona Esthers, including Muslim. We add in... This three v'chains, it's referred to as the three v'chains. If you look here, it uh, talks about the v'chain, refers to the Gilas Esther, when uh, Esther said, Chados, not our shul, Chados means the halacha. Uh, just in case anybody wanted to know what our shul means, but anyway. Uh, and therefore, we're trying to remember, we're coming to you, Asheloi Chados. We're remembering this v'chein. These are very Kabbalistic three v'cheins. You look in all the Svarim, talks about these three v'cheins. According to many opinions, and the Torah brings down in Tavkov Pei Beis, that these are 
part of the mitzvah of Malchius. We're going to talk later in Musaf. There's a mitzvah of Malchius, the Chroilis and Shavas. We'll get into that. There's a mitzvah to Raisa, a mitzvah to Rabbono. We'll come to that shortly. There's a mitzvah of Malchius, right? There's a mitzvah to anoint Hashem as our king. When do we anoint Hashem as our king? We all know it's Musaf. Actually, it's a big machlokus. Some people say the mitzvah, the Balamoyer in the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah at the back here, says the mitzvah of Malchus, the Chronis and Shavas is every Shmon Esra in Rosh Hashanah. Every Shmon Esra. We have to say, can you imagine? We have to do Musaf every time. I mean, you know, it would uh, be a long, long time davening. Uh, and he brings in all the proofs. I'm not going, that's not the point of this year now. There's also another Machlechus. When do we say Malchus? Right? The Chronis and Shavas have their own bracha. When do we say Malchus? When? Says Machlechus between Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri and Rabbi Kiva in the, in the Mishnah. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says, you say Malchus for Kainul Malchus in Kedushas Hashem. You say Malchus in the Brach of Atal Kodesh. So according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, all the Psukim Aleinu Meshabeach, all that stuff, is said in the Brach of Atal Kodesh. That Kodosh Hashem, Chol Kodosh, Kodosh Hashem, Chol Yom Yalu Chosero, Aleinu Meshabeach, Radon Akol, and the whole stuff. That's the shit that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri comes along Rabbi Kiva and says, no, Im... He basically says, no, Kudushas Hayyod. Like we do the halacha like Rabbi Kiva, we do it in the next book. Ato Bachatonu, Yale Vayavo, Vachain Dein Patro, that's that. And then we say Malchios. That's all Machloikas. Is it because of the shofar? Because then you'd have a gap of a bracha between the th- two shofar, the three shofar. Anyway, whole thing, we're not going into that now. The Machloikas, when do we say Malchios? So we pass Kun like Rabbi Akiva, we say Malchios in the second, the fourth bracha, the normal bracha. But. So what do we do with this opinion of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri? What do we do with his opinion that we say Malchias in every Tefillah? What do we do the, with the Balamoir, Dav Yud Beit, Bedape Haris, who says that you have to say Malchias in every Tefillah? What do we say with that? So, compromise. That became V'chein Tein Pachtecha. V'chein Tein Pachtecha is Malchias. It's asking Hashem to be the king. V'chein Tein Pachtecha, Hashem Akin, Akom Ma'asecha. Hashem, release your fear amongst the whole of the world. That's basically asking Hashem to be the king, right? So this is Malchus. It's a, it's a, when you think that you say you have to think to yourself, I'm now fulfilling a Sophic mitzvah of Malchus. I'm fulfilling the mitzvah of saying Malchus and Rosh Hashanah. Even in Ma'ariv, even in Shachris, even in Mircha, you have in mind, yes, I'm having in mind to fulfill this mitzvah of making a Kodesh Baruch Hu, asking that a Kodesh Baruch Hu should be the king over the whole world. And again, you can go through the translation, and then the chentin covet is zichronius. Why? Because first of all, we're saying about Hashem, put your fear over the whole world. That's Hashem being the king. Zichronius. Ah, if you give the Jewish people great honor and covet and everything, then everyone's going to remember you. Oh yes, look at the Jews. Yes, so that's zichronius, right? You remember through the Jews. That's zichronius. And the sadikim smoke the coming of Mashiach. That is shofra. Shofra is about the shofra of Mashiach. When Moshiach comes, the base of Mingdash, that's the last bit. So we have Malchias, we have Zichronas and Shovras, all mishmashed into one. How it fits in with the fact that he only says Malchias goes in the first bracha and not the last two. That's another story. We uh, haven't got time for that now. But this is Malchias, Zichronas and Shovras. If you miss it out, you don't have to go back, but you, you should try and say it. Uh, because obviously it's a part of the Tfiller, it's, it's a very important part. And I think to myself, as I say, I'll try and inspire people if I can. When we say, This is not a bracha. Okay? It's very important. This is not a bracha. It's not a bracha. That Hashem, this is reality. We're building it up. You know, Hashem, if you release your, your, your pachad over the whole world, we know you're the king. You're the king. You make the Jewish people the number one that we have great. You know, that the UN passed a resolution that the Jews are the chosen people. If Then, uh, you know, that's the thing covered, right? You know? And rabbis and these people who are so downtrodden, if people respect, right? The chen thing covered, right? That's all included in, in this bracha, and we can have in thoughts and intentions that. Then I often think to myself, you know, all these atheists, right? I used to say Darwin, but somebody told me Darwin wasn't an atheist. Uh, he actually believed in God, right? I, I, I'm not an expert on philosophy and that stuff, but take away a, 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 um, an atheist, Hashem has to say one word. All Hashem has to say is one word when he dies, and that's internal damnation. All he has to say is, Hello! Can you imagine? You know, I'm an atheist, don't believe Hashem. I know someone Hashem says, Hello! And if he has a sense of humor, don't I? I don't exist, don't I? You know, something like that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the dumbfoundedness? Can you imagine, right? I've spent my whole life denying your existence and you're right there, right? 
Can you imagine? So that's what we're saying. So after all this, the Sadiqim give this machu. The Sadiqim, it's not a brother. The Sadiqim are going to be so happy, bouncing off the walls. Can you imagine how they're going to be? Right? We can all imagine it. We show them Yalla, the Hasidim, but we're not going to be dancing. And all the evil, we are. Whoops, we've been wrong all this time. Like steam, it just evaporates. It won't just go poof, it'll just be gone. Like steam. It's just gone. It's nothing. It's just, oh, all our wicked evil plans are just gone. So that is just natural. This is not a bracha. So we have to imagine, we can close our eyes, you know, films are a wonderful way of doing things. I, uh, whatever, I'm not going to get into what I think about certain times. But anyway, uh, you imagine, you close your eyes, you think of these things, you imagine yourself standing. New England Patriots, you're a Patriot fan. They won the Super Bowl last year, right? You were at the parade, right? No, you've been to the parade with the great Simcha. Can you imagine the parade when Moshiach comes? You imagine, can you imagine standing in Shalayim and the bus with Moshiach is going to be coming, going to be cheering, going to be with our scars, Moshiach, Moshiach. Can you imagine that Simcha? That's what we do with Sadiq and Mizmachal, right? Can you imagine if the Dolphins won eventually? Can you imagine the Simcha with that? Oh, you won after so many years, right? <laughs> right, so, you know, can you imagine the Simcha? You're going to want to be in the front line. I'm going to be there. That, that, that's this. That's what we've got to think about. That's what we've got to imagine when we're saying these, these, these Pesokim. So this is a, a part of Malchias, the Chorinus, and Shofas, and we have to think about, uh, about that. Since I've started Malchias, and Chorinus, and Shofas, I might as well skip straight to it, because you're all wondering what it's all about. Well, you're not really, because you know it. But, uh, and that is, if we turn to Musaf, um, page... 454. So, the Gemara says, oh, we've got to say, ten psukim of Malchus, ten psukim that talk about Hashem Zichronius remembering, and ten psukim that talk about Shofar. Very interesting. So the Gemara says, Lama hu maski. Why does he have to say this? Frank the Gemara, what do you mean? Lama hu maski, Rachmana Oma. The Torah says. So that's the proof why they say it's a mitzvah in our Torah. Because it's Rachmana Oma. The Torah says, Learned it out from various Pesukim. So, says Rabbeinu Hananel, just in case you were wondering, at the side here of the, uh, the side of the Gemara. Hine matzonu min ha-toira shetzarech lahazke zichroinis v'shoifis um malchius. The toira. So according to Rabbeinu Hananel, it's a mitzvah min ha-toira. So when you're about to start malchius, you're having in mind, I'm doing a mitzvah min ha-toira of malchius. When you're about to start zichroinis, you have to have in mind, I'm about to fulfill the mitzvah zichroinis. And when you do shofars, you've got to have in mind, I'm about to fulfill the mitzvah of saying psukim of shofars. Rashi on the Torah in uh, Pasha's Emor also says it's a mitzvah in our Torah. Mitzvah in our Torah. Mitzvah saseh. The Ramban, he says it's a mitzvah de Rabbonu. It's a rabbinic mitzvah. And there's a whole debate. Well, well, well. Remember we spoke Shavuos. I can't say go and watch it online because it wasn't online because it was Yom Tov, um, so on. So we spoke about how the many mitzvahs, not in the 613 mitzvahs, right? We spoke about going to visit the sick, all these type of things. We spoke about, uh, it says, Sa uh, Balechaim, being nice to animals, not hurting animals as an Avero. It doesn't see that in the Torah anywhere. There's proofs that they learn it up. So we said there's many more things about it. It uh, doesn't have to be in the Tariag mitzvahs. It doesn't have to be explicitly written as long as it can still be considered a mitzvah. So this is a mitzvah. And we're doing a mitzvah. One of the mitzvahs of Shoifa, and then Malchus, the Chronis, and Shoifas. A mitzvah. We've got to have in mind a mitzvah. Malchus is self explanatory. We're saying Psukim that Akadosh Baruch Hu is the king of the world. I'm going to point out one or two things. Turn to page 456. We say the passage that gets me every time. We say, like Hibit Oven Biyak, the first paragraph over here. It comes from a uh, passage in the end of the title. Like Hibit Oven Biyakov, he never saw anything bad in Yaakov. No matter how bad we've been, Hashem overlooks it. He didn't see any amola, any iniquities, evil scheming in the Jewish people. Hashem likavimoi was through us melech boy. So one of the pshatim is through us melech is friendship. Right? Hashem is our friend. And I think to myself when I say this, you say to Hashem, hello mate, or whatever you say in America when you greet your friends. I used to say, hello, matey. But uh, that's what I think. I say to Hashem, hello, mate. He's my friend. Can you imagine how happy it is to say that to Hashem? The friendship of a king. You think about how many people, you know, when Ivanka Trump got into the White House, I was like, oh, yes, I know that girl. I've met her and I've met her. Oh, yes, she's Jewish. And I've been to her. But you know, everyone wants to do, oh, yes, we know it. So can you imagine, right? We are that with Hashem. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm buddies with God. Oh, yeah. I know God. I'm his buddy. He's my buddy. He's my friend. Go ask him. You go ask God. If I'm his friend, he'll tell you. Yes, he's my friend. 
We got friends. How lucky, how fortunate are we? Usrah, man, boy, when we're saying these words, we got to be like the Yeshayshosh, we got to have Simcha, Atzuma, you got to have unbelievable happiness that we are chosen, that we can say to Hashem, you are our friends, you are our, you know, we'll go for a kickabout in the field afterwards, we'll take the ball out, yeah, you know. How fortunate are we? How amazing it is, and so on. So that's what Malchus, we've got to think how special it is. Unfortunately, Zichronis is full of tears. Zichronis is absolutely frightening. We talk about Hashem, we've forgotten everything, Hashem remembers it, yep, it's right there, it gets all there, it's got on the computer, yep, everything, yep, it's all there. I think back to, what was the name of the guy who wrote the report? Oh, his name's gone out of my head. He was grilled for hours by Congress recently. He wrote the report about whether there was collusion. And uh, who was it? Muller. Muller, thank you, General Muller. So I imagine, not that I've done this in previous years because it only happened this year, but I've had previous people in my mind. You imagine Zichrens is like that. Hashem is sitting as a house committee. Look at all the questions they asked him. He had to know his report inside out. Every question, every they drove him. That's what Hashem is doing to us. So yeah, we're sitting there for hours, right? That's what Zichrens is. And it's frightening. Yeah, we might have forgotten. We think, oh yeah, I'm great. Hashem said, well, actually, so I say to Hashem as follows, and whether you want to use this is, is another story. You know, sometimes parents, we try and catch our kids out as lying, right? Come on, oh, we've got no homework today. Oh, really? No, no homework, mom? No. Okay, you want me to phone the teacher? Oh, no, 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 don't phone the teacher. No, it's okay. Because they know you phone the teacher, they'll find out you're lying. So they try and pull the wool over your eyes. So I say to Hashem, I'm not pulling the wool over your eyes. There's no need to phone home. There's no need. I admit, whatever you say, whatever you do is right. Don't look too far. I accept it. That way, hopefully, hopefully, he won't delve too much uh, into my uh, misdeeds because I'll be like, yeah, you're right. I did get homework and I lied about it. You know, you're right. I did do this. Don't bother phoning the teacher. Don't bother phoning this. I accept it. And that's what, hopefully, I don't know if it works or not. I can't tell you. But uh, that's some of the thoughts that I have. But then we say to Hashem, wait, wait, don't get too, too bogged down with us. Remember, Avram, ah, you're good mate. What he did. Remember Yitzchak, Yaakov, the Jews. Oh, rem- so that's what we do. We go on and say, don't worry about us. We're little nobodies. No matter what we think of ourselves. Remember these great people. Oh, yes. I mean, hopefully put Hashem in a good mood. Oh, yes. I remember him. Oh, yes. I remember the Jews ran out into the desert with no food. Oh, yeah. I remember. That's what we're trying to do to Hashem. We're trying to put him in a good mood and remember all those things. In the meantime, we rush off. Right? Type of thing, right? You know, oh, you remember all those things. Bye! And uh, you don't remember. That's, that's what we've got to think of these things, right? I'm serious, you know. We've got to uh, imagine these things and uh, bring it to life and feel it and uh, mm-hmm. so on. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's basically what I remember. Zoycha uh, Abris, we're asking God to remember the covenant of Avram Avinu. He said, we're going to be the top dog, the top cheese. What expression do we say here? Top dog, is it? You know, he said to Avram, your children are going to be the top dog. You know, that your children are going to be like the stars of the... And we say to Hashem, no, you, you, you talk about us, what about you? But well, don't think about it like this. Don't say it like that because you might not be best pleased if you start saying it like that in the middle of Rosh Hashanah. They'll say, don't you talk about me, let's talk about your views, right? But, you know, we say to Hashem, forget about me. Remember Zeich Habris. Now, even though we're saying it quietly, we can still scream, okay? And uh, very easy, you know what I'm talking about? Even though we're saying Shemana Ezra quietly, we can still put all our energies and all our, 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 our kachis in, 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 into all of this and we can really let it rip uh, even if we don't have any sound people tell me I should do that more often but that's another story so therefore we can really mean it we can really come down and, 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 and uh, say to our Kodesh Baruch remember these wonderful things remember the Akedah right they're what, they're, imagine how Hashem felt at the Akedah you know there's no time in heaven so the Akedah is happening right now right we've been through this before so yeah concentrate on that don't concentrate on me concentrate on that so that's the Chronus the mitzvah of the Chronus and some of the thoughts that you may or may not want to think about during that time. Then we come to the mitzvah of Shoifus. Shoifus is something we're looking forward to, like I say, the parade when Moshiach comes, the victory parade that we will have over the nations of the world. The victory parade, they say that a person, I was lucky enough to do this, should go and see the honor afforded to a human king. I've been to the queen, I've been as close to the queen as, of England as I am to you. So you go see the honor of the queen and the king is afforded in this world. Why? Although nowadays it probably also applies to sports stars and movie stars because they're the ones that people... Why? Because Yavkin. When you see the honor afforded to Mashiach and Hashem, the great parade and procession, right? That's going to happen then, you'll see. <laughs> these kings, these movie stars, these sports players, when the Patriots won, uh, when the uh, Dolphins won in 2021, after 50 years of not winning, whatever it is, you think that was a party. Ah, oh, 
Nothing compared to this, right? It's you, everybody dancing away. Uh, uh, unbelievable. That's what we're looking forward to, straight for us. We're asking Hashem first of all to remember Matan Torah. We're trying to put him in a good mood. We're saying, oh, yes, oh, I remember him. Yes, you took on the Torah. So you did. Yes, so you did. Yes, I'll be nice to you. That's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to remember Hashem. No. You said you're going to blow the you shock up a shofar god. Eh? No, now not everyone is going to have a shofar with them, but I like to hold the shofar when I'm saying this, right? Because you said, oh, shofar, shofar, remember. Aketas Yitzchak, remember it, here it is, hello. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a conversation. We are lawyers, right? We have to imagine that we are pleading our case. You know, like I said in my sermon last year in the Ila time, I said, we've got to make sure we don't leave anything out on the field. We don't want to finish and say, now nah, I could have given more. You know, we want to leave everything on the field, leave all our energy, leave everything we have on the field, as they say, the field of play. Don't come back thinking, you know what, I could have done more. I could have run more, I could have given more, I could have stopped him, I could have thrown it further. I had a bad game today. I wasn't at it, I didn't warm up properly, I, I, I wasn't feeling it. No, we have to leave everything out on the field, everything in the game, all our energy. Look, we're having a meal afterwards to, to, to replenish you, so don't worry, right? We're going to replenish you, you can leave everything out on the field, we can put all our energy, all our uh, in into thinking some of these things. So that's, but we should think again, the main thing is that we're doing a mitzvah. It is a mitzvah of Marches, Zuchronis and Shafers, and we say to the Kosh Baruch, look, give us life. Because we're doing mitzvahs. That's why we, some people have the meaning on those who are coming to my house. Yeah, I'm not going to make you eat it. But we have shmura matzah. We say that, Ah, oh, remember, we want to do mitzvahs, Pesach. I bought latkes from Costco. I wanted to serve them. My wife said no. So, so remember Hanukkah. Hanukkah, you know, we're going to do the mitzvahs. Yeah. But uh, that didn't go down too well. So uh, <laughs> we'll be having that. So we'll be a simon. But... Um, <laughs> Yes, you can make your own simon. If it says you should make your own, like we're going to be having schnitzel because schnitzel we call raw. You should be saved from all evil. That's what we do. It's, uh, you know, some people have raisins and celery. So you should have a rice in your celery. Right. So it says, it's, no, the Mishnah Brewer brings down, you should say anything in your language that is a lot of bracha and more. So we have schnitzel, schnitzel we call raw. So you should be saved from all evil. So we're going to be having schnitzel uh, at my house uh, in, uh, for our meal. And if you don't like it, I suppose it's a bit tough. But, uh, so we, <laughs> right. So that's a bit of Malchus, Zichronis, and Shofas. Now, it's nearly, it's 8.05, so uh, I want to get to something important before uh, we get to 8.15. Uh, there are many piyotin which I want to go through a little bit of, actually, but first I want to say something, and that is, I'll be damning Shachris all three days, so uh, we, we, we will be going slowly through these couple of things. Number one is the bracha of Avo Rabbo. We know we say every day. Uh, it's on page, uh, just before the Shema. Page, hold on. Right, so you know Avo Rabba, right? It's on page 288. You know, I said I'm not going to go through the translation, but I'm going to do a little bit here. We say to HaKadosh Baruch, you gave us the Torah. What we say, we make a wonderful bracha. We say, Avino Avo Rachamon. We beg Hashem, merciful King, Hamir Rachim, the merciful Rachim, will the same belibenu, put in our hearts. Lahavin, to understand, Lahaskil, to discern. Lil Moedu Lalamid, Lishmoi Velasis, to keep. The mitzvahs, I say, well, also is to do the positive mitzvahs, or the kayim, and to do even greater understanding. As kol divrei samut torah this is a frightening tefillah, which I myself rush through every day. And I don't think about it too much. Shabbos, I try and think about it a little bit more. But you think about all the shiurim that I give and the halachic psakim that uh, I have given, and maybe will continue to give a mitzvah Hashem and the gemara shiurs. All of that comes from this bracha. So when it comes, especially Rosh Hashanah, we have a bit more time. As I say, I'll be davening all three days so we can take our time and really think through what we're saying and beg HaKadosh Baruch Hu to make us understand the Torah, what it really means to understand it, to keep it, to adhere to it, all the wonderful brachas. Again, please take the time of look through this Avo Rabbah. That is something we had the Ashkivenu in the evening that we're going to spend time on, hopefully. And we're going to have the Avo Rabbah that we're really going to make sure that we, we, we say with proper con- intention and proper concentration to make sure that we beg HaKadosh Baruch Hu, uh, to, to, to help us understand the Torah. And of course, it finishes off with the, the begging HaKadosh Baruch Hu to bring us back f- you know, from all four corners of the world. So it's a, it's a wonderful bracha and it's something that we should spend time on. We should think through it. And in Mitzvah Hashem, we will do. We will take our time, so there's no need uh, to rush through that. The other thing is, before I get to some of the piyotim, is from Avinu Malkenu till we take out the Sefer Torah. I wrote pieces, I didn't bring them with me, I gave them out last year and will give them out again this year, about this time frame, from the end of Shemona Esrei until the Sefer Torah is on the Bimah. 
is one of the most merciful times. We open the Oron many times. Why do we open the Ark? Because we're trying to simulate, again, this is the idea of simulation, right? Thinking, imagining, like I'm telling you, you know, opening up, we're imagining we are opening the doors and the gates of heaven, right? That's what we're doing. But the gates of heaven are open and we have to walk in them. That's the idea. But when it comes to taking the Torah out, we are not walking in the gates of heaven. Hashem is walking out of the gates of heaven. The Torah is going to be read. The Sefer Torah is being removed, right? Kal Nidre will remove it. The only other time we remove the Torahs is for laning, right? It's, I'm not going to go into all of it now. It has such wonderful, amazing times, the uh, uh, time of the taking out the Sefer Torah. That's why Brich Shemei is one of the most amazing things. Asking Uncle Dushpoch, who Antu, Shalat Amachal, you rule over everything. You are the king, you are the everything. That's why we say Brich Shemei. Just interesting, you talk about Nusach. Now, there's two Nuschois really for, for Vahibin Soya Oron and En Komocha for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. But I think, and I may be wrong about this, that I think that it would probably be better if I do the ordinary Shabbos. Not that I like doing that sort of thing, changing the nose, but I think it would be better because everybody can relate to that. If I started going, many people might join in. So I think that's one thing that people might recognize if we sing the, you know, people getting... Can, uh, can relate to it. So I think, despite what I said earlier, uh, I think I might uh, uh, stick to the ordinary uh, Nusach, although when it comes to Shema Yisrael, that I might go back, I haven't decided yet, uh, to the Rosh Hashanah Nigan for, uh, for Rosh Hashanah for uh, taking the, uh, the special Shema Yisrael. But I think for Vahib and Sa'aran, we'll, we'll, the Avarachim and Vahib and Sa'aran, will stick to the ordinary uh, Shabbos thing so people can know. That time is the most special, most important time we can achieve so much. So what did the great rabbis who came up with all the davening, what did they decide to do? They put in this Yud Gimel Midas, 13 attributes of mercy. Again, you can go through it all yourself. I did bring a paper for it, the Yud Gimel Midas, the 13 attributes of mercy. There's again a dispute about what they are. Is the first two Hashem, Hashem, two separate Hashem, the Gemara says, yes, it is, that Hashem is before I sinned, I'm still your God, and after you sinned, I'm still your God, and all this stuff, these wonderful expressions of mercy, which Hashem promised will not go empty-handed. And every time we say it, so Yod Gimel Midas, we ask Hashem for forgiveness straight afterwards, every time. We say, Why? Because that's what Moshe Rabbeinu did. Hashem said, tell me the Yod Gimel Midas, and then straight away Moshe Rabbeinu asked for forgiveness, please forgive the Jews, and it worked. So every time we say the Yod Gimel Midas, the 13 attributes, we straight away ask Hashem for Salak to Lavinim, please forgive us. And that's what we do here. This prayer on page 392. Again, I'll be diving all three times, so we can spend time on this. Uh, we're not going to rush through this, and we can spend time, first of all, singing the Yod Gimel Midas, but then the Rebbe Nishal Oilam. This Rebbe Nishal Oilam is basic. I don't mean basic in a bad way, right? This is basic. You know, we get carried away with everything that we need everything we want, you know, get carried away with everything. This tool is the basic. What did Yaakov Avinu say when, he, when Hashem showed him the basic amygdosh? He could have asked for anything. Hashem would have given him anything. He asked for the basics. Give me beged, lil boish, clothes to wear, lechem lechel, for shafti b'shalem, and to go in peace. Three things, right? He could have asked for anything. Millionaire? No. I want bread to eat. I just want to be, have what I need, clothes, and that's what we do here. Male Mishalu Sai Latoiva. Yeah, go through it again. See the translation. We're gonna go through this slowly. Again, asking Hashem in many different ways, I forgive me for my sins. Again, remember, this is one of the most auspicious times not to be wasted. Hashem is about literally putting his slippers, taking off his slippers, putting on his shoes, putting on his coat, or maybe not here in Florida, but you get the idea. Hashem is literally standing at the door. He's about to come out. He's about to get in the Uber to come here. This is a great time. I'm afraid we'll talk about it. And this is when we can really concentrate and we can really ask Hashem, first of all, to forgive us, because that's the most important thing we need, forgiveness, no matter what else, forgiveness. Because uh, even if we're not so lucky to carry on living, we've got to have forgiveness and we don't have any issues or problems uh, in the afterlife. And we say again, Mechilo Bechesed. Because sometimes Hashem says, yeah, I'll be Michael, you, but you know, I'll still punish you a little bit. Mechilo you Bechesed, know? a complete kindness. It's the first thing we say, V'sochreini, V'vokdeini, again, V'sochreini l'chaim, Aruchim, give me a long life. Chaim toivim m'shalim, Parnoso toivim, Chakot of lechem lechem, bread, food to eat. Right, you know, I think about hurricanes at this time because people say, ah, of course it's always full. Not at times of hurricanes and things. 
right? Some people run out of food. The stores run out of food, right? It happens. You think, oh, how in Florida, oh, I'm a millionaire. How's it going to happen? No, it's going to happen, right? Uh, gas shortages. They can't get the trucks in, right? There's issues. No gas for weeks. No air conditioning, right? We know it. We've seen it. We live through it. This is what we're asking for here, that it should never happen to us. It's a great auspicious time. close to wear. All very nice, but what for? What do I want it for? La hagos besoyro secho. To learn secho uh, lovin of course, knowledge and understanding. La hovin, not just because I want to be able to come up with schemes to trick everybody and make himself a millionaire. La hovin or la haskil in case soyde secho. And then we finish off. I always think about the United Nations. Some of you say you heard me talking about the United Nations. Uh, I mention the United Nations by name. At the very end, we say, the same believe Malchus for Yeretz of Vesarov, and I add in the United Nations, because the United Nations is very big, and we need that, uh, we ask Hashem that, I'll translate it, again, this is the most auspicious time, we need to really concentrate on these, Gazeros against Israel, against uh, Torah learning, against uh, all these sort of things that could happen, right, that uh, we were also scared of. The same believe Malchus for Yeretz of Vesarov, put in the heart of the king, the advisors and the officers, and as I say, I add the United Nations because they seem to have all these resolutions against Israel. It's ridiculous. And we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu the same, make them, you know, like us a little bit, you know, don't uh, frighten them off. And uh, that's why this is a special time. So again, we'll be going slowly through this. We're not going to be rushing this. We're going to be saying it now nice and loud. Right? We're going to really make sure that we burst through the gates of heaven, um, which are easy because they're already open, uh, and so on and so forth. So this, if we can only concentrate, if we can only really have the energy, if we can only really motivate ourselves, besides for the mitzvahs of saying Malchus, Akronis, and Shofas, if we can only motivate ourselves to pray and to, to do something at one particular tefillah, this is it. When the Sefer Torah is about to be removed, that's uh, something that's very, very special. This is preceded it is now 8.15 where we normally finish. If anybody would like to leave, uh, I have no problem with that. But I'm going to continue. If anybody wants to stay, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, the Ovinu Malkeinu. Ovinu Malkeinu is a very, one of the oldest prayers that we have. Comes from the time of the Gemara. Tanis Da Chof 25. Says that Rabbi Akiva was davening. I mean, they were davening. They said 24 tfilos. 24 tfilos to have rain. Nothing happened. Rabbi Akiva got up and said, Ovinu my father, Malkenu, ain lanu melech We have no king other than you. And started plucking it down, right? So they said, oh, what a wonderful prayer this is. It's amazing. I, I can't go into why. Or vino, you know, you're asking Hashem as our father, which has one set of rules. Malkenu, our king, you know, you can be very friendly with your dad. Oh, hello, dad. You can phone up, have a good laugh and a joke. You can't do that with the king, right? You have to have a different uh, uh, relationship with them both. So that's uh, a di- what Avinu Malkenu. So he said that. So because of that, we put that in. Rabbi Kiva lived the time at the end of the first place Amigdosh, time of Bachofpo revolt. So this is basically like 1900, uh, 1950 or 60 years old. So this is one of the oldest uh, things that we say. Of course, they've been embellished, right? He didn't say all these Avinu Malkenus, uh, but he said a few of them. There's been different uh, uh, opinions, but this Avinu Malkenu uh, has great. And it says here where I left it here. Uh, no, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Um, talked about again that you should say with intense tears. I remember in Gateshead, I can close my eyes, I can remember the Gateshead Rav crying his eyes out. You could hear him, he was bawling away. It was so inspiring that throughout the whole of Vinu Malkenu, he was bawling every single day. Not just Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. I didn't go Yom Kippur, I was there, Rosh Hashanah. And uh, he was bawling his eyes out. I remember I could hear him, he was screaming, he was crying through this Vinu Malkenu's tears. Cr- crying like a baby. It was so inspiring, one of the most inspiring times that, uh, you know, sometimes I think from all the sermons that I give, if I could just stand there bawling my eyes out, that might be more inspiring than anything. Although you can't just turn these things off and on. Either you have it or you don't. Or you feel it or you don't. But sometimes that was just so inspiring. This Ovina Malkino, again, go through again some of the basics. Ain't long enough to be done a king, except for you. You're the, th- you're the only one we have. And we go on. We don't say this on Shabbos. Because it's got srachim, it's got uh, our, our requests. We're asking Hashem, give us this, give us that. The Gemara says we don't say Halil on Rosh Hashanah because, you know, it's not really a time of singing. So the Gemara says that, I mean, the uh, Mepharshim say that the Avinim al is instead of the Halil. What that means, again, is that not a t- we don't have time to explain that. But this is something really special. So from the end of the Shemun Es, the Avinim al where we say, Kosveinu Baseifer Achayim, writers, that this is a time that we must really unify our hearts. 
and uh, and so on and so forth. And then we go on to say, We can think of the Holocaust, we can think of these various different times through history where Jewish people have had to give up their name for Hashem. And we should think that and ask Hashem in their memory. And also it goes on to say that one should think that if, hopefully it never happens, that uh, if we ever get the chance, not that we want it, but uh, you know, you've got to really, really uh, uh, think about HaKadosh Baruch at this time. So this 10, 15 minute period from Avinu Malkinu through taking the Sefer Torah out to uttering Shema Yisrael with Hashem in your arms, cradling Hashem. And you're saying, don't forget Shema Yisrael is the last possible of Malchus, even though it doesn't say anything about king, but it's the greatest testament to being a king. God and king are the same thing. We're not going into that now either. But uh, we go through the whole thing. We build up ourselves, begging Hashem. And finally we scream out, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Lekeinu Hashem Echad. We believe in you. We know you're one. You're the only one. This period is, is so intense. It's, it's so amazing. We need to really make sure that we, 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 we take it upon ourselves. So I'm going to spend a few minutes quickly uh, going through some of uh, the Piyotim. So um, if we could turn to... Oh yes, and the David Mizma. We know we say Psalm 24. The David Mizma for Panasa again says, if somebody says that properly, it's Muftach Loi She'ein Panasa. He will never struggle for Panasa if he says it with the right intentions. Uh, what that means, I have no idea. But again, this is a very, very steeped uh, um, um, uh, prayer. I haven't got time to explain it now, but it's something that uh, we say it on the nights of Rosh Hashanah uh, that we, we we say many, many times, um, and it's something we should think about. So now I just want to go through quickly a couple of piyutim. Um, we have Hashem Melech, Hashem Moloch, which we say both days Rosh Hashanah and Shachris. I'm going to do it Shachris. Page 328. I'm going to do it to the tune of Anim Zemiras. A lot of people do that. The basics are Adirei Yom Adihiru B'Koyla Hashem Melech. You know the tune of Anim Zemiras that people know, so everyone can join in. I like to say to you, even if you can't read the Hebrew, if you know the tune, you can still hum through the tune. One of the best, most raucous times here when people go at the end of uh, You Did Nefesh. You know, we finish and everyone's going, la, 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 I did a la, la, That's why Chabad don't have any words to their songs. They're just singing songs the whole time. Just, you know, because you don't need words. Words get in the way. People don't know the words. But so, so that's why, even if you don't know the, the word, you don't, can't read the words, still you can hum the tunes and, and, and feel connected. And, and we said about the piyotim and then the gunim are so special, uh, feel connected. So that one is basically saying how all the angels, everybody is attesting to Hashem being the king, Hashem Melech, Hashem Moloch. That's a, 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 a peel that's uh, very special. We're going to sing that to the uh, tune of Adam Zemiris and, and, and so on. And obviously we know about uh, Nasana Tokev, the story of Nasana Tokev. You can read it in the Ask Well Maxa about how Nasana Tokev came about. It's also from the 10th century, so it's a very old prayer. Again, that's also something frightening. Just think about it. It's, uh, it's, go, it's imagining what is going on up in Shomayim. You think about it. You know, you're mamish in the court. Hashem is the judge. You know, you have all the, uh, what do they call the people in the court? The courts, uh, the clerks and everything else, the angels. You know, you've got to really set the scene. We've got to really imagine it, bring it to life uh, and so on. And then we have obviously things like um, afterwards we have Bechol uh, Maminim. And now, Vachom Aminim again is something that over the years has changed. Which lines we say, what we don't say, what we do, the way it's all split up, and everything is all changed. Uh, but again, Vachom Aminim, we all believe in Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yes, we may not sometimes act like we believe in it, which is obviously a challenge to make sure we do. But Vachom Aminim, Shehu Chayvakayim, we believe that you are the only one who exists. Vachom Aminim, Shehu Melech Tov, you're good. We got to think about when we're saying this. Yes, I believe. Not Vachom Aminim. Everyone believes in it. Do you believe in it? Do you believe in it? I believe in it. That's what we've got to think. I believe. Yes, we dive in, in, in the plural. We dive in, in the congregation. You know, so we don't say, sound too conceited. I want this, I want that. But the halach is very clear. If you dive in and you don't think about yourself, you're not yoytzer. You don't fulfill the mitzvah. You have to think about my needs. When you dive in, you ask, so give panos to the whole class. Well, oh, give me. I need panos. Give me. You have to think about your own needs. If you don't think about your own needs, you're not yoytzer. So the same with these piyotim. When you're saying, v'chol maminim. Everyone believes, you've got to think, I believe. I believe, right? Oh, yes, everyone believes, great. But do you believe? You've got to really think about it. And if you don't believe, if some of those statements challenge you, let's be honest, some, of the, some people have problems with certain things, right? They don't quite yet internalize it and believe it, you know, whether it really speaks to them. You've got to deal with it. And you've got to find a way of internalizing it to make sure, yes, I do actually believe uh, what I'm saying. I do actually believe it. And I do actually believe that it's something that uh, I can... Um, I uh, can relate to. So, as I say, there's so much more to do, and I urge you all, please take the Machzorim. I can't tell you to take the ones from the Shul home, that you have to ask the president, but 
or whoever. Uh, but uh, I urge you, please take the time. We still have a few days to make sure there's plenty of books you can buy. There's a book, The Day of All, the Arts Call has a maxa. There's explanations of davening. I told you this website I put in, Bu'ure Hatafila, which is, uh, I don't know if anyone's looked at it yet, uh, but it has a lot of fantastic material on there and so on and so forth. Come prepared, because you know, you've got to make sure you have everything that you need. You won't go to court, you know, trying to get off a traffic ticket without knowing what you're going to say, right? You won't go there with, uh, um, without everything prepared. How am I going to get off this ticket? What am I going to say? One more. So same with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, right? You've got to go in planned. What am I going to say? Yes, I know what I'm going to say then because, you know, like in sport, they say, why do you have to practice so much? Because when you're under the strictest of pressure, your mind goes and it's all muscle memory, right? Because I've hit the baseball a thousand million times in practice that when I'm under intense pressure, my heart is beating through my chest, I can still do it, right? I can still, uh, I, I can still hit the ball because my mind is there. I can still concentrate on the game because it's all internal. The same is with davening. When we're coming under the strictest of pressure, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, we're frightened out of our minds, right? The Koshbaru is there. We feel the Kedusha frightening through us. We still have it. It's still there. We're on autopilot. We have that uh, internalization. And just to finish off quickly with the shofar, right? there's so much to speak about the shofar, but the shofar is, we go through davening, we speak about davening and all this sort of stuff. But when all else fails, when we haven't got anything else, we don't know what to say, how to say, the shofar is the basic cry, right, of a basic animal, right? No flashy notes, no golden uh, uh, ornaments, uh, instruments, I mean, you know, the basic animal, right? And a basic instrument. It's basically good. You're taking a ram's horn and blowing it, right? And like me taking off the leg of that chair and blowing it, right? I mean, you know, there's no more of an instrument than that, right? So you're just taking a basic stuff from a basic animal and you're saying to our Baruch I just want to cry out. I just want to cry out. We can shut out the whole world. When we're hearing the shofar, we can say to Hashem, nothing else matters. Everything else is insignificant. Our lives, everything doesn't matter doesn't mean anything except now for these few seconds I shut out the whole world and I want to connect I want to tap into the energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I want to log on to the internet and join the world wide web with millions and billions of people I want to make that phone call to somebody on the other side of the world even though I can't be with him even though I can't see him but I'm connected to him down the phone line even though there's no literal phone lines anymore it's all waves that's what we say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. when we hear the shofar we want to connect to you we want to you know, join in and feel that energy and, 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 and hopefully connect and, and, and so on. And if we do for HaKadosh Baruch Hu and appoint him as our king, crown him as our king, beg him to be appointed as the king over the whole world, then Hashem will look favorably upon us and say, yes, you want these good things for me? Okay, I've decided for whatever reason at the moment not, but you wanted all these good things for me? You know what? I'll give you all these good things. And may we all be inscribed in the book of life, the... Uh, Book of Great Parnassah, not just clothes to wear, but clothes to have in the closet and shoes to have in the closet and have choices of what clothes and shoes to wear. Not too much choices because then we'll be late for shul because we don't know what we're wearing. But, uh, 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 and, and so on. But uh, we'll all be inscribed for a happy, healthy, gesund year, a year where Akadosh Park will finally decide, yes, my kids want me. My kids need me. I'm going to come back. I'm going to release myself from the cage. The pace of Chrome was saying, you know, it says, Arye Shag, a lion screams, me lo yiro, who's not afraid? Arye is, he actually said about me. My name is Arye. He said, Arye is Rosh Hashanah, Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Rosh Hashanah Rabbah, all in the name Arye. So uh, that's me. But uh, he said, Arye Shag, he said, he took his kids to the zoo, and the lions were warring, and his kids were laughing their heads off. And he said, what happens to this pasuk? It says, a lion is roaring, everyone's afraid, and yet my kids are laughing their heads off. He said, what's the answer? The answer is the lion's in the cage. If the lion's in the cage, you're not afraid of him. Oh, he's in the cage. You can't get me. Right? So our challenge is we have to take Hashem out of the cage. The last thing we say in this whole period, when we beat the Arava, on Hashanah Rabba, the last thing we say is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, take Mavsekes HaBazel. Take away the Iron Curtain. That's the original Iron Curtain between us and you. Take away the cage. You have to be careful what you wish for. Because take away the cage, the lion comes roaring out. But, you know, you've got to be ready for it. And we ask Hashem, that he come roaring back to life um, like the book of the lion, the witch in the wardrobe although I was told that's a Christian book so I shouldn't quote it I suppose but Hashem should come back uh, like the lion and uh, roar in and get rid of the wicked witch the evil against the Hora, and come back to Yushalayim and encourage me for Omar Amen I hope I didn't speak too fast Yeah, thank you